done this a few times and I never do it the same way because people come from different things. So first of all, how many here knows of uh, Gintu or Portage? No, as in no they exist. Okay. Using Gento. Writing e builds. Sometimes. Okay. There we go. Okay. Um today's presentation I'm gonna uh, show you a little about uh portage package system in Ginto, and um, as any good system, before you start actually hacking away doing your own stuff, you have to know a little about what's going on. So um, there will be some short presentation of what the system does um, just to the user. So, there. Uh, First, uh, these slides are not as good as they could have been. On the other hand, I have not put any kind of license on it, so if you in any way can make this closed source and make money of it, be my guest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why even considering using a package system? Of course, this is kind of obvious for most people, but in this I also mean why do you want to make your own packages? And why do you want to use Portage? Well, first of all, Portage is a little different from many other systems in the case that it is a meta packet system. What does that mean? Well, it means that the packages in Portage are not exactly containing the software itself. It just contains information of how to install the software. And um, this gives some advantages. The first one it's compatible with other licenses. While Portage and the packages themselves are uh, DPL, the software you install with it does not have to be. So you can also use this package system for commercial software. Um, actually, in the official package tree of uh, Gento, there are several games where you have to have the CD from somewhere else. Um, another obscure um, example is when you install uh, Sun Java. Um, so, uh, Sun requires that you personally download uh, the software from their website because you have to accept a license. Portage can kind of, uh, handle that too. Or uh, also VMware is another example of a yeah. paid for program that yeah. exists in Portage. Yeah. Now, other thing. Portage is lightweight. Um, yeah. Used to sort of. Used to be. Used to be, <laughs> used, to be, used, to be used to be lightweight, but it, it's lightweight in the sense that uh, people creating Portage try to keep it uh, with as few dependencies as possible. And uh, of course, in in when you run Portage in uh, on Gentoo Linux, the, you use a lot of tools because you are a known uh, Linux platform, but the core system itself does not have all these dependencies, which means that you can actually move this system to other platforms. One of the prime examples is that someone, they must have been crazy, has actually moved Portage to uh, uh, um, OS X, Mac OS X. So now you can run Portage on your Mac and install software with that. They also make a nice good. All the BSDs and even Solaris, uh, they're for the tool running well on these. Yeah. Not easily, but. <laughs> <laughs> what it would like. Yeah. Now, here's from more of the user point of view. Portage keeps tracks of dependencies. This is a pain of the, uh, pain in the ass for anyone who doesn't have a, a package system. Of course, you expect a modern package system to handle this. But when you install something, you wanna do not want to keep track of all the libraries and stuff you need for one particular uh, piece of software. You want the system to handle this automatically. And in case of writing your own packages for Portage, it means that you can 
uh, rely on existing packages. This is nice if you want to give this package to someone else, so they can easily install it. Portage support virtual dependencies, which means that it, a dependency can be not just on a specific piece of software, but also it could be on, um, well, some virtual, uh, what should we say? Like mailer? Yeah. A ma yeah. It would, like, it would okay. require a mailer client, but it does not require a specific one. But any mailer that can actually, uh, or mailer server for that, yeah, yeah that can, that, that uh, actually gives that virtual dependency, it can use. Another example is that an application might need um, OpenGL, but does not care whether it's Mesa or from X or from whatever. Portage keeps track of what it installs. This um, might seem kind of obvious, but the idea is it keeps track of the individual files. It keeps track of dates and for each file it installed it also have the MD5 checksum. This means that Portage can install something, something that most PAC systems can do today, but it has been a pain <laughs> in the ass before. But it also means that you can actually in your live file system find out a certain file who owns it. It means you can find out has anyone changed anything. And this is, can be can be very useful. Portage support per package configuration, meaning that, of course, you have some kind of configuration of how you want to set up your system, but you can also change this per package. I'll come into this a bit later. Um, Portage support overlays is very useful, especially for, in this case, you want to build your own packages, meaning that you have several, you can have several package trees as overlays and the whole system sees kind of the sum of all this. This is also very useful when you want to just make your own package because you want to add a patch to some software. Again, we'll see this. And port support code reuse. This you will not get until you see it. Not to you. Why not to use Portage? Portage is source-based. Um, the, the reason why I listed here is because this is one of the many reoccurring flame wars that whenever people discuss what should, what should happen in, in Portage, I think every every other month there will there will start a new thread about whether or not it's a good idea it's source based. And usually some, someone goes like, oh, we want binary packages because we want this distributed to a lot, of, uh, a lot of machines. And then you have like a thousand megas going back and forth. So some consider this a disadvantage, that's why I mentioned it here. But I will also mention that when I say source based, it does not necessarily mean source code. Because as I also said, the source, the software you install, can be whatever. The port is just handle how to actually install your system. It doesn't care really what it is. So it could also be binaries from CD. Mm -hmm. Portage is slow. <laughs> this is <laughs> another <laughs> big, big. Usually people complain about it's the uh, portage is slow for searching the package tree. And if How you install, you install your machine once every year, I don't know. Again, <laughs> I mentioned it because it's a reoccurring flame war. Well, if you're making many machines, then they yeah. become real big. Yeah. And several people has claimed that Portage sucks because it's written in Python, so now they wanted to make the new Portage in C, and then we you never heard from them again. Um, <laughs> if you start yeah. many machines, just install one and just, just well, yeah. start your yeah. entire... I don't consider this as a advantage, but I should mention it. You can also do binary packages, but you can't install them. Yeah. 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 Yeah.